I'm Dr. Benita Rattan. I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So today's video is about how to check your skin type. This is really important because it helps you choose which products are best for your skin so that your skin looks and feels the best it can be. And this honestly leads to confidence. It leads to you feeling like you can do anything when you feel confident in your skin. So if that sounds good to you, give me a thumbs up. Let's dive right in. Okay, so the main types that we talk about are dry skin, oily skin, combination skin, and normal skin. So there are some tips and tricks that you can do in order to test what skin type you have. And then we're going to discuss the best combination of actives that you need to be using in your skincare. So let's start off with dry skin. Dry skin is often feels sensitive, it can flake, it feels uncomfortable and tight. So what we tend to say is, if you do the wash test where you wash your face with a normal cleanser and after 30 minutes, don't apply any moisturizer or anything else, if your skin is feeling tight and uncomfortable, it's likely you have dry skin. The same is true is if you then after 30 minutes, your skin is starting to feel oily, it means that you have oily skin. So when you perform this test make sure that you have neutral settings that means that you're not on retinol you haven't been exercising that day you haven't been stripping your skin with harsh um, surfactants um, and you haven't used any exfoliating acids so you would perform this test in a very neutral situation where you're not applying any other actives and just in the morning you wash your face with a normal hydrating uh, wash nothing with nothing that's too harsh or have any um, actives in it or any irritants in it uh, so something like simple micellar gel wash is a good one to try this with and then assess your skin after 30 minutes now starting off with dry skin with dry skin not only is your skin tight and uncomfortable or flaking but can but it can also look dull and this is a common um, complaint that happens with dry skin. The reason your skin looks dull is because imagine with dry skin, the, the dead skin cells are compacted and there's no um, water molecules in between these, these layers. So what happens is the dull skin just sticks to each other and actually these skin cells all have pigment in them. So now you've got these highly pigmented skin cells sitting next to each other and the edges of the skin cells tend to be curled upwards. And so when light hits the skin, it scatters in different directions. And so you don't get that flawless, glowing skin that we're all aiming to achieve. So what we want to do is basically use humectants. Those are water magnets, things like glycerin, urea, are fantastic water magnets that will hold water in those top layer, uh, the top layer of epidermis, the dead skin cells, and so it will help separate the, the cells. On top of that, you want to use moisturizers that have emollients in them because emollients will smooth down those edges of those skin cells. And so again, light is able to reflect um, evenly and so you have more of a flawless glow. You also want to trap water in the top layer of skin which is why you want to use occlusive. So this is why we say to look for thick moisturizers. We look for petrolatum, shea butter. These are all things that help to reduce trans epidermal water loss. That means trap water in the top layer of skin which is essential for dry skin. Now, skin can change as we age. So it's very common, for example, to have normal skin as a child, then you get to a teenage years and you have oily skin, and then you get you might go through a period of having normal skin in your 20s and up to your late 30s, then suddenly you become premenopausal and skin can start to get drier because we are producing less hyaluronic acid, and we, which is another humectant. And so you're able to, you're not able to hold on to as much water as you could when you're younger. This is why it's important to keep assessing your skin. Doing the same skincare routine you did 20 years ago is not gonna give you the results that you want because your skin has changed. We are all aging. I'm 37 years old now and my skin is very different to a decade ago at 27 and I use different actives, um, I have a different skincare routine because of where my skin is now. 
I am actually thinking it might be worth me making a video for you, a series of videos on skincare through the decades. Today I'm going to film one for three to ten year olds. Uh, but if you want me to do one for preteens, so 10 to 13, I think they need their own skincare routine. Then uh, 13 to 18 needs its own skincare routine. Then I would say late teens to 20s needs its own skincare routine. And 30s and then 40s, 50s, 60s uh, need a completely different routine. So if that's something I need to make for you, I actually would need to do a full series. Uh, can you write down below um, skincare for the decades? And I will definitely make that for you. So dry skin, you're going to find that retinol, you're probably not going to, be able to tolerate retinol, to be honest. Retinol is an alcohol and it's very irritating, even on normal skin. So with dry skin, I wouldn't ask you to use retinol. I would say start with either retinol palmitate, which is an ester, or uh, retinaldehyde. Retinaldehyde is my favorite. It is more effective multiple times more effective than retinol but with zero irritation and I would even recommend it for dry skin. So my favorite vitamin A for dry skin is retinaldehyde. Literally I mean I make you know I make my own antioxidant serums for my own face and I make sure that I'm putting retinaldehyde on my skin because also as I age my skin is becoming drier. Okay, so the next skin type is oily skin. So oily skin, you feel like you want to blot your face. Um, and when you do blot your face with tissue, you can see that there's oil on the tissue. And again, this can happen 30 minutes after washing your face. Now with oily skin types, what you might find is that you're oily um, in your ten, when you're 10, 11, 12, and then it starts to break out into small pimples and then maybe into cystic acne later. So with skin of color, if you're a parent right now and you're watching, pay attention to your children's skin because they're not gonna know what's going on. They'll just suddenly have a spot one day. But actually what we wanna do with, with our children is to regulate sebum as best as we can from a young age because for us, our kids don't just get acne, they get the red mark and the brown mark afterwards. And that's often more stressful than you know the temporary spot. So a few, few ingredients that I would recommend if you have oily skin. Start off with a salicylic acid. You can use this as a wash, as a toner, as a leave-on product. You can use it in creams. But what salicylic acid does is it's fat soluble. That means it penetrates into the pore and it helps to unclog that pore. Don't forget that pore, when it gets clogged, equals a spot. And we need to do everything we can to prevent that from happening. I'd also recommend niacinamide at about 5%. Niacinamide is great at sebum control. Um, I used to recommend the ordinary 10% and then the feedback I was getting was that people were reacting at 10%. And the reason for this is that all the clinical studies were done on niacinamide at two to 5%. And so now we are getting creams that have niacinamide in that range. Um, I've recently um, just reviewed Hiram's niacinamide um, cream and he uses it at 5%. 2% or 5%, he uses it in that bracket as well. Um, Notorium does another one that's 5% uh, niacinamide gel. So just stick in that percentage bracket. I also recommend clay masks. Clay masks are a great way to mop up excess oil. It feels really um, satisfying afterwards if you have, in order to be able to remove that oily slick and feel refreshed without making the mistake of um, over stripping the oil and then encouraging your skin to produce more oil. So that's the cycle you don't want to get into. I'd also add in your vitamin A. Vitamin A is great at increasing cell turnover. So don't forget when you have acne skin, you get something called hyperkeratinization. This basically means skin cells become sticky. When those skin cells become sticky, they clog the top of the pore. When they clog that pore, you create an anaerobic environment in that pore. That means no oxygen. Guess what loves to be in an area with no oxygen? The bacteria P. acnes. That bacteria then multiplies and multiplies and multiplies in that pore. And it's having a, the time of its life in that pore. You know, it's got no parental supervision. There's no oxygen around. <laughs> and then that erupts and forms a spot. 
So in order to prevent that, we do want to be on vitamin A and it is prevention as well, right? Don't just wait for that spot to go and be like, oh, I'm done. Oh, no, don't worry about skincare ever again. <laughs> we want to prevent it from happening again. Your skin is a living organ. So you want to be on that vitamin A. Vitamin A is a great um, nighttime ingredient to be on from teens onwards. Um, start off with your low, less irritating vitamin A's like retinol palmitate, retinaldehyde. Um, and as we get older and you're looking at for anti-aging, then you might want to move on to 0.5% retinol. The other thing I really want you to be careful of is makeup. So when it comes to oily skin, please opt for a powder foundation. You actually want something that's going to mop up oil, not add oil to your face with a cream foundation. Because the bottom line is that to make an emulsion, Emulsion is basically a combination of water and oil. Whether I'm making you a cream, whether I'm making you a foundation, it has water and oil. I wouldn't add oil unnecessarily to oily face. It just doesn't make any sense. I want you please to purchase a powder foundation in order to help mop up excess oil. So the next skin type is the... Um, is the oily t-zone so it's combination skin it tends to be that you break out here and you're oily here but actually the cheeks are very dry so what i would say is use salicylic acid in this area that's probably the most potent thing you can purchase over the counter that's just a single ingredient and then in the cheek area make sure you wear a thick moisturizer that's more of a heavy duty emollient with petrolatum in it uh, rather than a lotion then we have those lucky people who have normal skin so the problem with normal skin, actually, is that if there is no pain, then you don't want to learn about a specific topic. And so what happens, actually, those people who have no normal skin and are lucky actually are not very good with their moisturizer, not very good with their sunscreen, not very good with their antioxidant serums, because it was never a pain point for them. Those people who have acne and oily you know, prone skin, they're on TikTok learning about skincare. But if you have normal skin and you've never had a breakout and actually it's just not a pain point for you, then why would you Google anything about skincare? So actually for these people, the trap is that they don't wear their sunscreen and moisturizer early and that can lead to pigmentation in their early 20s. So getting hyperpigmentation, melasma on the cheekbone area can happen quicker because they have had probably a couple of decades of not wearing sunscreen. So there is unfortunately the flip side to normal skin, which is also what I've seen. And if you're a parent watching this, um, I also want you to pay attention to your children's skincare because I don't want them to be in that situation. Um, you know, touch wood, I'm really happy that they don't have acne, etc. but just make sure they become obsessive with their moisturizer and their sunscreen. It just should be a thing that's done, a habit. So with my kids, for example, I say to them the night before you know so the day so imagine they're going to summer camp or school or whatever the day before I make sure they lay out their clothes so they know they have to do that first they have to brush their teeth and they have to wash their face before they come downstairs and then when they're in the car they both have their own skincare in the car so where they you know where the handle is they put their moisturizer and their sunscreen on and it's just a habit and I want to create these good habits so they feel what it feels like to have supple skin and that that's normal to have tight skin would feel abnormal then but that's only going to happen if we instill good habits in them so that's how I do it uh, it'd be really interesting to see if your parents if you are parents and you're watching this and you know how you instill good skincare habits in your kids because I will be adopting them <laughs> and sharing them with everybody else too I'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video so make sure you hit that notification bell and do ask me any questions you want to ask don't forget to download your free guide for skincare for skin of color link is down below don't forget to follow me on instagram dr Benita rattan and skincare by dr v and on tiktok which is dr Benita rattan and i've now created a private facebook group for my dr v inky hackers it's called dr v inky hackers <laughs> so that's spelled i-n-c-i hackers um, and there are a series of questions that you have to answer in order to be let into the group. So it's important that you actually are one of our followers so that you can join that inner circle. And really, I want to create a safe space where we can talk about skincare in a non-judgmental non manner. So you can upload your photos, you can ask me questions. And I really wanted 
a place where we can all help each other. We've got to a place now that we've had 25 million views of this channel so far. You know, it's a lot of people that can help each other and we can create a wonderful community for our skin of color family, you know, specifically for skincare. It would make me, it would make me feel like, you know, I've, I've achieved something that I've been wanting to achieve for years. So please do join us on that. Um, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you for the next video.